Hello, everyone. Welcome to another video on this virtual event that we are having here at the Lincoln Home to celebrate archaeology. And my guest uh, today is uh, Terence Martin. Uh, he is an emeritus curator of anthropology at the Illinois State Museum. Terry, how are you? Excellent. How are you? I'm doing just fine. And uh, but before we go into uh, the specifics of our conversation, I have a few questions uh, for you in order for people to get to know you in this conversation. So my first question to you is, how did you get involved in the field of archaeology and why? I've always been interested in history and, and natural history. I was a bird watcher in uh, junior high and high school. And uh, when I ended up going to uh, Grand Valley State Colleges, it's Grand Valley State University in Allendale, Michigan. Now, um, that's where I got involved. They, they had an archaeology program, an active field program there for undergraduates. I just uh, really took to that. And um, uh, we got a chance to go out and do surveys and do excavations. And uh, so really got familiar with, with uh, the field. Do you have any particular specialty uh, or time period that interests you the most? Well, as I, like I said, I'm interested in natural history and history. And uh, when, uh, when I started working on uh, lab projects, uh, one of the things that people, uh, different archeologists I was working with would say, well, um, what about the animal bones? We, we don't have anybody who's looked at that. And uh, I said, oh, that's great. And so I uh, started working with uh, animal bone identification. And that's an area that's now known as zooarchaeology. Uh, now, um, so what kind of projects have you worked on? Well, I've um, been interested mostly in, in uh, French colonial archaeology. And uh, I've been fortunate uh, when I was doing my graduate work at Michigan State University to get involved with work at Fort Wiatnon in Indiana. And then when I kept at the State Museum here as kind of a continuation of that for my dissertation work, I uh, got involved with work at uh, Fort Deschart uh, over in Southern Illinois. And then uh, since I've been at the museum, uh, worked with Alan Harn on a, a bison salvage project uh, on the Illinois River near Mapleton. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our new Philadelphia project in Pike County, Illinois. Also been fortunate enough to spend several years working uh, on some medieval sites in Russia. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Terry, um, because now I want to go into uh, the archaeology done at the Lincoln Home. And there has been, there was a project that you were involved in from 2013 to 2015. And this uh, project happened at an empty lot that exists right now in the historic neighborhood at the Lincoln home, known as the Jenkins lot. What did you know about the Jenkins lot before coming in and do the excavation? Can you tell us a little bit about the history of that? Well, we learned that uh, the uh, Lincoln home uh, uh, park service site had been uh, interested in that lot previously and some work had been done in, two, I think it was 2008, uh, the site was uh, uh, documented as being involved with uh, the Underground Railroad, and uh, it became uh, uh, accepted in the Network to Freedom. And through some of that previous work that was done, we knew that Jenkins was a drayman. We knew that uh, a wagon driver, uh, that he lived on the block. He was involved with what's referred to as the slave, slave stampede in 1850, where he um, uh, transported uh, something like a dozen escaped slaves from St. Louis uh, who went to, uh, were going to Bloomington, Illinois. He lived on the lot with another family, uh, his family and uh, the James Blanks family. So we had these two families. Uh, turns out they lived in a duplex. There was these series of uh, uh, bird's eye view and one uh, from the, uh, I believe it was 1867 showed the structure and we could see when we looked at it real closely that the west end of the house had a gable and a, and a, and a chimney for a fireplace. Now, so now you know the story of the site based on all the, the, the documentation that existed uh, from the 2008 uh, uh, report, uh, Terry. Uh, what motivated uh, you and your team to do excavations and what did your team hope to find in the Jenkins lot? 
Well, Tim Townsend at the uh, home site there, uh, uh, being involved with the history, uh, one time approached the State Museum and uh, about uh, some potential, what, what we thought would be a, a, a good way to interpret that vacant lot. Well, one of the things that we uh, uh, asked about and, and, and he pointed out, well, there probably not much uh, uh, potential for archaeology because there were two later houses that were built there uh, in the 1800s and early 1900s, and it probably obliterated all traces of the Jenkins house. But what, you know, what, what do we think about uh, uh, for exploring that lot? And we thought, well, has anybody really looked? And said, no, uh, there'd been some, you know, surface surveys, but no excavations. And so we proposed to do some real limited excavations Dennis Sneglich, who uh, uh, was a, a, a field supervisor for this project, and uh, uh, he's the one who had, had experience working in the, um, the Lincoln Home neighborhood. And so uh, he studied the maps and looked at the lot and everything, and, and, and we talked about this, and we thought, well, let's, let's do an excavation here, one by one meter excavation, see what we find, and then we can expand out from there. Uh, but before we go into the uh some of the artifacts with that you uh and Dennis found there which i think they're super cool uh i want to uh i want to uh, get an idea be uh, of how was your experience excavating at the lincoln home well like most archaeological projects uh, uh especially in the in the in the past you would go out and you would work on a project in this in a rural area you're away from everybody uh, uh nobody sees what you're doing but the Lincoln home site is, is uh, uh, an example of urban archaeology and, and uh, right there with uh, tourists coming through and everything. And so we kind of planned for this and we, we thought, well, this is a good opportunity to show what archaeology is, uh, what we're looking for, and to tell the stories of Jenkins. Um, we were lucky that uh, Tim informed us about uh, uh, an internship program through the Park Service. It's referred to as the uh, Cultural Resource Diversity Internship Program. To help, uh, so we got a, a student to work for two months with us. Uh, like I said, two weeks was in the field doing excavations, but prior to that was getting ready for that, preparing the brochure that we would hand out, and then uh, after the excavations, doing lab work and actually um, uh, uh, figuring out cataloging. We ended up doing that for three years. The last year, uh, instead of the uh, um, Park Service, and we en ended up using uh, uh, the Illinois College Explorers Internship Program that the State Museum and Illinois College. And each summer, um, that, that was one of the really pleasant experiences. And Dennis really enjoyed working with them, uh, teaching them how to identify artifacts, how to excavate, and and uh, and then also meet with the public at the fence. We would display artifacts uh, from our findings so that we could explain and show. Uh, what we were finding, people would come by. Uh, some of the people, not only tourists, but some of the people who lived in the in, in the area, would come by uh, every day or every other day and see well, what did you find today. And I imagine they had all amazing questions about what you guys were finding. So I guess my my next question is, what artifacts did you find at the Jenkins lot? To the average public viewer, they would come by and they would see our cut nails and plaster and brick fragments and things like that and, and uh, uh, wouldn't see that as too exciting. The artifacts we were finding were, like I said, mostly uh, architectural remains and a lot of refuse, uh, but we were in, in clinkers and slag, broken glass, broken pieces of ceramics. Um, but the ceramics were interesting in that that's a, a sensitive dating issue or a, a piece of dating uh, uh, information that we can use when those ceramics were made, when they were discarded. Uh, we were also getting a, a surprising amount of uh, personal, small personal items, but we were getting pieces of uh, buttons, uh, glass beads, we had a thimble, we had some uh, uh, writing implements, uh, little styluses, uh, uh, we had uh, a silver plated spoon that came out, a marble. We were also getting uh, things that, that, what, that I was interested in, we would get uh, animal remains, animal bones and, and teeth. And uh, so we were able to look at uh, some of the dietary refuse, and that would include uh, remains of pigs and cattle. Uh, uh, we had some fish, we had chicken bones, 
what was interesting with some of the fish is that we uh, uh, were able to identify mackerel under some of the fish, and we also got some oyster shells. So it wasn't just local things. It was showing some of the things that were purchased and uh, uh, what they were getting from, from far away places, not, not just local things. Uh, so I imagine all of these artifacts that, that you uh, and your team found uh, had different kind of like layers of time, right? I mean, I imagine you find you found artifacts that dated back to, let's say, the 1850s, maybe all the way to 1900s. Uh, well, and that that was what was kind of surprising. We expected because of all the later activities that went there, we thought that we were probably going to be overwhelmed with a lot of debris that was post-occupation. But most of what we were finding dated to the mid 19th century, and so. Uh, Dennis Neglich, being a, a, a historical archaeologist specialist and really familiar with the ceramics, uh, was really continued to be amazed at that. And I should add that uh, Dennis passed away last April, and, and he really should be doing this presentation because he's the, the one who was in, in charge of, of all the field work there. But uh, uh, he did a great job with this and, and, and seeing it in the correct historic context as well. My next question to you, uh, Terry, is uh, so out of all the items you found and then is found and your whole team found during the excavations in the Jenkins lot, what was the most interesting one? Well, definitely it was a, a, a small shirt that we found it had uh, of an RIT on this white wear piece of a mug of some kind, ceramic mm -hmm. mug. And uh, so Dennis went to work on the internet that night and he worked on that and he discovered that this was, um, uh, was a reward of merit uh, mug. And this was something in the 1850s that was made for positive reinforcement for teachers to present to students who did well in their, in their schoolwork. Uh, James Blanks, who uh, shared the lot with, with Jenkins, uh, he was involved with the uh, African-American education in the 1850s for Springfield. And so to find this and find out what that meant is, was by far the most uh, interesting and unique artifact that, that uh, we came across. And it really had a nice tie-in to the, to the Blanks and Jenkins family. So that was a big motivation then to just keep going and, and try, to form, try to find more uh, artifacts such as this that help us interpret uh, the history, you know? I think uh, this is where, where archaeology uh, meets history and interpretation because uh, it has helped us uh, interpret uh, not only the, the physical uh, place that where a house once existed, but we get to know more about the people who lived. I guess uh, my next question to you, uh, Terry, would be, uh, what do you think uh, is the most valuable lesson learned from the Jenkins lot excavation? Well, I guess one of the, you know, when you're involved with field schools quite a bit, uh, there is a favorite expression that a lot of archaeology professors will say to their students that it's not necessarily what you find that's important, but it's what you find out. And um, the archaeology of the Jenkins lot is a is a perfect example of that because you could uh, you could just take the artifacts and 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 describe them and everything, but uh, to do, to go and dig in on on the work, well, what what does this reward of merit shirt say, or what are these foundations, the arrangement of them on the lot? Uh, so these are are some of the things that that were uh, uh, really important for us. Uh, one of the things that we did learn also was that. Uh, um, uh, I think it was the last season of excavation. We were we were continuing to get some remains, and and we were getting some early uh, dated uh, brownware ceramics, which uh, date to the 1830s. And uh, we were able to to uh, suggest that somebody uh, had a structure there that predated the Jenkins. So there again, to uh, uh, not be uh, Confined by the documents, let the data show what it, what it, what it, what the story it has to tell, uh, and and be open for that. No, that, that's a that's a that's a really good point, and I think that's a really good uh, way to wrap up. You know the the meaning of 
of, of doing an excavation um, specifically at the Jenkins lot. Before uh, I let you go, I have a question for you for those uh, of our viewers who might uh, might be interested in maybe pursuing a career in archaeology. Um, what words of advice would you give to those watching uh, who are interested in pursuing a career like yours in archaeology? This is probably one of the most important things is, is just being able to uh, have good composition and writing skills because no matter where you work and no matter how complicated the archaeology, you have to write up a technical report or something for the public. Another thing is some of the most interesting archaeology I found is what's in your backyard, local. Those are uh, some of the most interesting projects because these are the areas that people really know very little about. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a great advice uh, for everyone that's watching this video. Uh, but um, once again, uh, Terry, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me uh, on this uh, interview, which is part of a virtual archaeology day that we're having today. Uh, and uh, a few videos played before this one. And stay tuned because more videos are about to come where we learn more about the local archaeology. We're going to have the Illinois State Museum and the Edwards Place as well, a special guest in this event. So stay tuned. Uh, Terry, thank you so much, uh, and for those of you watching, see you later.